Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, let us hear His voice. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus, the Son, and give Him the glory. Great things he has done. Can we give him the glory for the great things he has done? Give God all the glory. Give God all the honor for the great things he has done. Because the Lord still loves us with such great love. He is so rich in compassion and mercy towards us. Appreciate him. Even when we are dead in our, and doomed in our many sins, he united us very well with the love of Christ and save us by his wonderful grace. Appreciate him. Lord, we appreciate you. Lord, we give you praise. He raised us all with Christ, the exalted one, uh, we are ascended into the glorious perfection and authority with the heavenly realm. So we are now co-seated together as one with Christ. I appreciate God for the wonders he did in the Easter period. Through the coming ages will be the visible display of the infinity, infinite riches of his grace and kindness which, we, which is shared upon us in Jesus Christ. Oh, through Jesus, he did this. Appreciate him. Open your mouth and appreciate the Lord. Some of us are in the meeting where we are singing. You are not worshiping God. When you are praying, you never open your mouth. Why are you in the service? We are here to worship before we hear the word of God. Open your mouth and worship him. Lord, we are grateful to you. Baba, we appreciate you. We give you glory. Malibu Shakaya Baya Baba. Rakaya Basanda Kuria Oh, we bless your name. We bless you, Jesus. We bless you, Jesus, for the wonder you did. Oh, we thank you for the wonders of the cross. We thank you for the wonders of the law, for the great mercy, the great kindness, the grace that we receive from the law. Lord, it is by grace we are saved. Lord, thank you for your rich mercy, your rich grace, your loving kindness to shower upon us. That brought us into yourself. We give you praise. Be thou exalted, Lord. Blessed is the name, Lord. We give you glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. I believe we are going to worship the Lord. One of the essence of coming to service is not only to hear God speaking to us, is to worship Him. God is seeking men and women that will worship him in truth and in spirit. You can not be in the service who are singing him. You close your mouth. You have left the assignment of singing to the choir alone. They are singing choruses and praises. You close your mouth. You are not here to worship man. We are here to worship God. Every time the worship is going on, because God inhabits the worship of his people, we must give him due and correct worship from our hearts. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We take two songs together before the word of God. I want us to worship him. It's only you, Jesus. It's only you. It's only you, Jesus. It's only you. It's only you, it's only you, Jesus, it's only you, it's only you, it's only you, Jesus, it's only ah, it's only you, only you, oh, Jesus. You worship him and the beauty of his holiness. 
Jesus, Jesus is only you. Oh, it's only you. It's only you. Jesus, Jesus is only you. Oh, it's only you. sacrifice of your only begotten son on the cross of Calvary for us. Thank you for the mercy, your rich mercy we enjoy, your love that you lavish upon us and you save us by grace. Thank you for giving us Jesus Christ as access unto all we needed to be and become in life. Unto getting in connection with you, we bless you for what you did on the cross of Calvary. Giving us Jesus as our divine access, we return glory to you. Ah, we have come this first Sunday of April. Come and speak your word to us. Amen. Come and guide us by your word. Amen. Come and instruct us yourself. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. I pray, O oh God, that you will be with my mouth. And make me a vessel of divine utterance. And that the Holy Spirit will be speaking your word unto every heart. Amen. And your word will find entrance to every heart in the name of Jesus. Amen. We shall be encouraged. We shall be blessed. The sick shall be healed. Amen. The oppressed shall be delivered. And the name of Jesus shall be glorified. Amen. Thank you, wonderful Savior. You, we worship and we adore you. In Jesus' exalted name, we pray. Amen. Can we say a believing amen? amen. Shout a ladder, hallelujah. hallelujah. We may be seated. 
I want to appreciate God for the privilege and the opportunity given to me to stand to minister the word of God in the church today. Thanking God for the leadership of the church. I want to appreciate all of us that are in the service this morning to worship God, especially my son and his wife that are here. The Lord bless you Amen. greatly in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord has given me a message for you for this first Sunday of the month of April. When we were entering the month of April through the communion service we had, one of, thing, one, one of those things that the Lord spoke to us was the divine access we have through the blood of Jesus. We look into the power, the power of the blood of Jesus, the power the blood of Jesus manifests so that, that as we are partaking of that communion, we must be connecting ourselves with that power, the power of the blood more especially after the Easter Sunday. This morning, I will be talking about Jesus Christ, the divine access. Jesus Christ, the divine access. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, it is important for us to take note of this. When we talk of access, we are talking of entrance into something. The open door, a way to enter into somewhere. The opportunity that is open up for someone to find a way into somewhere. That is what is called entrance. That's what is called also access. To access a house, there's always an entrance. That entrance is called access. There are several things God has ordained for you and me that we can access through Jesus Christ divinely. If we don't know that we can access certain things, we might not be enjoying it. It will be there. Blessings and provision are kept inside a store or in a house. And there's an entrance, a door, that you can pass through to access those things. If you don't go through that access door, you might not be able to touch those things you may be enjoying personally. And that is the reason why I want to present Jesus Christ to us as the divine access for those things that I'm going to mention to us today so that from this morning, you begin to put your mind in it that, look, I want to access this. I want to get this. To get them, Jesus Christ is the access. Let me tell you this important thing. Access is better than assets. When you talk of access, a man that has access is more better than somebody that has assets. Because where that man can get to in life, in future, the man with assets may not be able to get there. Hallelujah. Access of Jesus Christ can take you to where you never imagined. The access in Jesus Christ can take you to position you never dream about. Any man that connects himself with that access and work with the opportunity that God has offered us, God has presented to mankind through the access that is in Christ, such a man is going to enjoy the provisions and the benefit and blessings from the Lord. Hallelujah. In connecting with the charge with the this morning, I will be reading for us again from uh, first and foremost, Ephesians chapter 2, I will read verse 4 and 5. Because what happened on the cross of Calvary, we are still in the season of Easter, just about, uh, was it last Sunday? Praise the Lord. It was last Sunday that was Easter Sunday. This is the Sunday that follows. We are still in the season when God did certain things that we needed to keep on appreciating. And that is what made Jesus Christ to become the divine access for you and me. 
I read Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4 and 5. I am reading from the Passion Translation. But God still loved us with such great love. He is so rich in compassion and mercy, even when we are dead and doomed in our many sins. He united us into the very life of Christ and saved us by his wonderful grace. He raised us up with Christ the exalted one, and we ascended with him into the glorious perfection and authority of the heavenly realm. For we are now co-seated, we are now co-seated as one with Christ. Throughout the coming ages, we will be visible display of the infinite riches and grace and kindness which was showered upon us in Jesus Christ. For by grace you have been saved by faith, not Nothing you did could ever end this salvation, for it was the love gift. Hallelujah. We must keep on appreciating that love. We must keep on appreciating that mercy. We must keep on appreciating that grace. We must keep, it, keep on appreciating the kindness that God showed unto us. It's not only that he saved us, he now gave us divine access into certain privileges, into certain opportunities, that when we know those things that we needed to access through Christ, and we begin to press the access button, we get into them in the name of Jesus. Can we say amen? amen. Praise the Lord. Now, I will be mentioning those accesses. I will mention about seven, even though they are more than that. And we talk about those seven. Number one, Jesus, I said Jesus Christ is the divine access. One divine access unto God and to the Holy Spirit. For you and me to connect with God, <laughs> to assess God, to be connected with the Holy Ghost, that we are here today to serve God. Jesus was the entrance. Jesus was the divine access that opened the way for you and me to access God. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 11, verse 27. Matthew eleven twenty-seven. 27. He made us to know that <laughs> no man, let me, all things are delivered unto me by my Father. No man knew the Son, but the Father. Neither knew any man the father save the son, and he and he to whosoever the son will reveal him. It's the son that revealed the father. For you to know God more, for you to access God, for you to be connected with God, it is as many that the son made the father known to. So is the access unto God. Hallelujah. If you are going to know God more, you need to know more about Jesus. If you are going to serve God more, you need to serve Jesus more better. He's the one that came physically here on earth. God is invisible. But we saw God manifesting here on earth in Jesus. He's the one that revealed God. The, 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 the representation of the invisible God. He was here. As a representation to make us to know this is how God is. By his action, by all that he did. He's the access to that invisible God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In John chapter uh, 14, verse 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come unto the Father. No one can assess the Father except by me. Who we are said the Father, you cannot get to God except by Christ Jesus. So it's our divine access to God from today. Note that. That you say, I want to come and serve God. In your serving God, discover Jesus. In your serving God, know more about Jesus. That was why Paul would say, that I might know him 
what was it? Who is that that Paul was serving? He was serving God, but he needed to know more about Jesus. The excellency of knowledge of Jesus he needed to acquire. So for you to serve more, you must know about God. I say it's the divine access unto God and to the Holy Ghost. John chapter, I mean, Luke chapter 24, verse 9, 49. He told the disciples, say, tarry ye here in Jerusalem until I send the promise of the Father. He was the one that assessed the promise and released it upon the apostle. If you are going to enjoy the Holy Ghost, know more about Jesus. He was the one that introduced the Holy Ghost unto us. Praise the Lord. John chapter 14. Can we read John chapter 14? John chapter 14. Verse 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. Can you say even for God to send the Holy Ghost? Who was the asset that we made Holy Ghost to come? Jesus. Hallelujah. Who the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Jesus is divine access unto the Holy Ghost presence. You want to enjoy more of the presence of Holy Ghost in your life. Know more about Jesus. More about Jesus will I know. More of his saving fluency. More of his love who died for me. You needed to know more about his love. Hallelujah. He was the one that sent the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. He introduced the Holy Ghost to us. Know more about him. You will enjoy more of the presence of the Holy Ghost. He's the divine access unto the Holy Ghost. In uh, John chapter 16, verse 7 to 8. Nevertheless, I tell you, John 16, 7 to 8. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Who will send the comforter? Jesus, the divine access to the Holy Ghost. And when he comes, he will reprove the word of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So number two, divine access unto life gate and eternal life. Jesus is the divine access unto what? Life gate. For you and me to get back unto that Zoe life of God. You remember when God created man. He put his own life in man. And that life of God was cut off from man. And then another life took over. For us to obtain and have access unto that life gate, the life of God, it was Jesus that brought it unto us. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. For he had dedicated a new and life-giving way for us to approach God. A new and life-giving way. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 20. Jesus dedicated for us in his body new and life-giving way for us to approach God. For just as the veil was turned into two, Jesus' body was turned open to give us free and fresh access yeah, to God. Hallelujah. Free and what? Free access. Free access to the life of God that man lost in the Garden of Eden. To, those, to that Zoe life, to eternal life. He was the access to eternal life. Praise the Lord. John chapter 5, John chapter 5, verse 24. John 5, 24 made us to know that Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believe on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come unto condemnation, but is passed from death unto life eternal. Who is giving the access to life eternal? Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is the divine access unto life eternal. 
So if you are going to enjoy eternal life, if me and you are going to have eternal life, we need them to obtain that eternal life through Jesus Christ by believing him, by accepting him as our Lord and Savior. Then we have access to eternal life, the love of God. John chapter 17 verse 3 says, John 17 verse 3, And this is life eternal, that they may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Knowing Jesus is what makes a man to obtain eternal life. He's the access to that eternal life. When you know him, you can access eternal life. The life everlasting. The life we enjoy hereafter in the kingdom of God. Number three, Jesus is the divine access into our glorious inheritance lost in Adam. Jesus is the divine access into the glorious inheritance we lost in Adam. Praise the Lord. Are you li listening to me? Jesus is the divine access to that glorious inheritance. God created a beautiful garden with every form of provision and resources and put it in care of man and put the man inside the garden to keep on enjoying. That garden was a glorious resources. I mean, it, it was a glorious inheritance that man can supposed to live and enjoy. But unfortunately, man was driven out of that inheritance. Man did not continue in that inheritance. He was driven out because he disobeyed God. Every one of us were given birth, birth to out of that glorious inheritance. So that's why we are not enjoying the kind of provision that the first created man enjoyed. So we are now struggling to look for what we will eat, what we will drink with all this economic crisis we are facing. That first man did nev never needed to face such thing. He would only go and pluck fruit and eat. Everything was there in the garden for him to enjoy. A great and glorious inheritance man was driven away from. Jesus became the access. Because when man was driven away from that inheritance, when you read Genesis chapter 3, verse 23 to 25, we discover that God put an angel with flaming sword to guard that inheritance so that no man will, per adventure through scientific whatever, will go inside that place. It was only Jesus that came to open and grant us access to as many that accept him as the Lord and Savior, to as many that believe him, to as many that believe the finished work of the cross, they are going to get access into that glorious inheritance that God yet reserved for man. Hallelujah. Amen. That inheritance is reserved for us in heaven. Apart from what we are going to be enjoying here, he said, it is reserved for us in heaven. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I think it's uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 6. Can somebody confirm for me? 1 Peter 1, 6. We, we, we are born again. We are born again into a glorious inheritance. 1, 6. Okay. Oh, 3 to 4. Read for me, please. Blessed be the God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Which according to his abundant mercy. Has begotten us again. We are born again. Unto a lovely hope, a hope that at the end of this journey we are going to be somewhere. Because Jesus died and rose, we are going to rise also. To an inheritance that can never be corrupted, that can never be defiled, that never faded away. Hallelujah! Access to that glorious inheritance reserved in heaven for us is through Jesus Christ. Any form of inheritance you acquire here on earth can be corrupted. It can fade. It can be destroyed. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. I remember when I was teaching on discipleship, when we look at this issue of this inheritance here on earth, one of the inheritance that you to endure is a landed property and house. Money can be devalued. Thief can carry it 
clothes we, we tear, house we become dilapidated one day. Whatever kind of inheritance you get, money, shares in the bank can lose their value. Any kind of inheritance that anybody will quit on you on it will lose their value. They will be corrupted. They will fade. They can never be forever. Even land. You know, land may not be forever. If earthquake or call in the place they gave to you, what has happened? A natural disaster. That land is gone. If God made God decide one day we are creating road and they, want, and they demolish whatever you put on the land, what will you do? It has already gone. It can be corrupted. That's the only one inheritance that lasts a bit. No other one. But the inheritance we are talking about that Jesus becomes the access for us to enter, it does not corrupt. It does not fade. He endures forever. God kept that inheritance. Jesus is the divine access to the inheritance that Adam lost if you will embrace him. If you walk through that access, you will get there and will get there in Jesus' name. Amen. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 10. He brought so many sons unto this glorious inheritance. Jesus is the one that did that. For it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons unto glory unto their glorious inheritance to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering, to the death on the cross. For both he that are sanctified and they who are sanctified are all one, for which cause he is, he is not ashamed to call them brethren. This one qualifies to become his brothers, to share together with him in that inheritance that God has given to him as our eldest brother. Hallelujah. Amen. Number four, Jesus is divine access into wisdom, into power and glory. Are you looking for wisdom? <laughs> are you looking for power? Oh, there are many negative power. The correct and true power, if you want to access it, is through Christ. Are you trusting God for glory that man have lost? You can get recovery of that lost glory in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus is that one that granted us access unto power, unto glory, access unto grace, <laughs> access unto the throne of God. He grants us access. He's the divine access unto that. Amen. Can we look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 24? But unto them which are called. Let me read from verse 23. But we preach Christ crucified. Unto the Jews a stumbling block. Unto the Greeks foolishness. But unto them which are called. Both the Jews and Greeks. Christ the power of God. Christ the wisdom of God. Hallelujah. If you want to get access to the wisdom. And power of God is through Christ Jesus. May we get access unto that as we embrace Jesus rightly in Jesus' name. Amen. I say, may we enjoy glory and grace of God abundantly in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's also access unto glory. First Colossians, I mean Colossians chapter 1, verse 27 and 28. Colossians 1, 27 and 28. To whom God will make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, the riches of the glory, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. In the mystery of glory is also the hope of glory. Hallelujah. For a man to access glory, for a man to radiate in glory, Jesus is the access to it. Whom we preach, warning every man, teaching every man, in all wisdom that they may present, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus, so that they will enjoy the glory. I am praying for you. You will enjoy the glory of God. Amen. You will enjoy the grace of God. Amen. The beauty of God is the glory of God. In your journey of life, in all that you are doing, the beauty of God shall manifest Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Jesus is the divine access to the beauty of God to the goodness of God that any man can enjoy and celebrate with. When you have Jesus, you can get the glory. Hallelujah. Without Jesus, no glory. 
But with Jesus, there's a glory, there's a beauty, and there's a honor a man will manifest in the journey of life. Number five, Jesus Christ is the, is the divine access unto covenant blessings and provisions. Divine access to covenant blessings and provision. Are you looking for blessing? You are trusting God to enjoy provision. The kind of provision that the first man was enjoying. That was taken away from him and every human being. Enter into the life of struggle. Life of suffering. Life of challenges. Presently we see the economy of the whole world is, is, is being affected. Men and women are groaning. Under, under struggling. Why? Provision is not the way God ordained it at the beginning. Do you want to get access unto blessings of God? You want to get access unto those provisions that God has reserved for those who love him? It is Jesus that is divine access to provision. Hallelujah. Divine access to the blessings of God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Can we look at Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3? Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. Every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realm has already been lavished upon us as love gift from our wonderful heavenly Father, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, all because he sees us wrapped into Christ. Hallelujah. Because we are wrapped inside Jesus. Why was he giving us the blessing? <laughs> Why was it? Because we are inside Jesus. We are wrapped inside Jesus. When he, look, uh, when he wants to look at us, he will see who? Jesus. Say, this is my beloved son. Let me read this blessing. As he releasing the blessing, we now begin to enjoy blessings and provision. But are you wrapped in Jesus? Are you born again? Have you given your life to Jesus? Are you abiding and dwelling in Christ? Say, abide in me. Dwell in Christ continuously. It's those who are abiding and dwelling in Christ, they have access unto provisions and blessings of God. I pray for you today. God will help your life to be wrapped in Christ Jesus for you to enjoy abundant blessings and provisions in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He did have access unto that covenant blessing. Divine access to covenant blessing. Jesus is the divine access unto covenant blessing. Can we also check Galatians chapter 3, verse 13? Galatians chapter 3, verse 13. Yet, Christ paid the full price to set us free from the curse of the law. He absorbed the curse completely as it became a curse in our place. For it is written, written, Everyone who is hung upon a tree is cursed. Jesus Christ dissolved the curses from our lives so that in him all the blessings of Abraham can be poured out upon Gentiles. And now, through faith, we we'll receive the promised Holy Spirit who lives in us. Hallelujah. The promise of a father, the promise of covenant blessing comes unto us through that means. I pray that we will access every form of blessedness we have in Christ in heavenly places in Jesus' name. Amen. Two points to the last one. One point to the last one. Divine access to freedom and victory. Divine access to freedom and victory. Hallelujah. Jesus, I don't know whatever bondage or oppression you might find yourself inside. Whether oppression of the devil, oppression of flesh, oppression of sin, whatever form of bondage or witchcraft or power or cortic, any form of bondage a man may be inside, any form of oppression, Jesus is the divine access to bring you and me out of such oppression. Hallelujah. He's the one that redeems us and delivers us from the kingdom of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of light. Colossians chapter 1 Verse 12 and 13. He translated and delivered us from the kingdom, from the control, from the domain where darkness overruled and took us into the kingdom of his dear son by his blood. We have access to freedom. We have access 
unto victory by the blood of Jesus. John chapter 3, sorry, John chapter 8, verse 32 or 36. John chapter 8, verse 36 says, if, this, if Jesus, the Son of God, shall set you free and set me free, we shall be free indeed. Hallelujah. I declare freedom for everyone that has been oppressed of any sickness, of any disease today in the name of Jesus. Oh, can you say louder, amen? amen. If you are having any form of not oppression in your life, any form of oppression in your business, whatever you're doing, you are liberated today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Jesus is the access of liberty, access of freedom from any form of oppression when you are connected to him. Hallelujah. You shall be liberated totally. He said, if Jesus Christ, the Son of God, has set you free, you shall be free indeed. John chapter 8, verse 36. And John chapter 8, 32 said, if you, you shall know the truth, you will know the truth. The truth you know shall set you free. And who is the truth? Jesus. Jesus is the truth. He said, I am the truth and the life. Hallelujah. He's the truth. So when you know him more, you are, uh, you are going to enjoy liberty from any form of oppression that come into your life by ignorance. Several oppression upon man and woman come because they are ignorance of the liberty and the assets they have in Christ. As you come to know that liberty has come through Jesus and you are set the door of liberty, you will be free. I declare freedom for you. As many that are sick, I say you are free. As men that are oppressed, I say you are free. In the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He has also granted us victory. He has made us overcomers. Hallelujah. We overcome by his blood. We overcome by his word. The word of testimony. In every challenge that we are facing, he has made us to triumph over them all. Amen. It is the access in Jesus. Romans chapter 8, verse 37. Romans 8, 37. Yet, even in the midst of these things, I don't know these things, I mean the challenges we are finding, we have in our country today. Even in the midst of these things, what are those things in your life? Today, the cost of living is very high. We learned of recently that they have increased the, the uh, electricity tariff from 60 naira to 225 naira. Petroleum is going up every cost of living. To go and eat only, only a meal in a restaurant is about 5,000 naira. To take only a good meal. Everything is changing. The word of God says, even in all this, in the midst of all this, we triumph over them all. Hallelujah. We become victorious. In Christ, we triumph over those challenges, over the economic depression, over whatever. It is in Christ we can triumph. When you have access into Christ, you can prevail over the economic woe that is affecting the nations of the world. It is in Christ. He said, yet even in the midst of all this, those things are read at the back. I don't want to go to them. We triumph over them all. For God has made us to be more than conquerors. Hallelujah. He has made us to be victorious. We triumph. You will triumph in the name of Jesus. Amen. Over the challenges of life, over challenges in your home, challenges in your business, challenges in your career, you will triumph in Jesus' name. Amen. The asset to triumph is in Christ Jesus. Amen. Finally, divine access into God's kingdom. Divine access into God's kingdom and eternity. Praise the Lord. In Christ Jesus, we have access unto God's kingdom. Here where we are on earth is not the end of the journey of our lives. Hallelujah. It's not the journey. We must have a mind that our journey must end well in the kingdom of God. Everything we are doing here, we must be mindful of eternity with God. We must keep eternity in view in that journey of life because no man will be everlasting here. Whether you stay 100 years, we pray that God will keep us reaching 100 years. You will still go. Our brother was giving testimony of uh, the mother. 
he lived 104 years. Was it not a great years? Even though people were still crying. Praise the Lord. My dad lived over 100 years. As he cried. Praise the Lord. But we are praying if God will spare a lot to even reach that area. But even if we reach 100 years and 120 years, you will still die. Where will you go? Jesus is the divine access. The key to the kingdom of God. Access to eternal life with God. Eternity with God. You can never get there except you go through the entrance Jesus. Except you go through the opportunity that has been opened through the veil in his body. If you don't accept that point, all that you are doing here, it will be meaningless. All that you acquire here on earth, you can never carry there. It's your life. Divine access into the kingdom of God. You see, except a man be born again, he can never see or enter the kingdom of God. But anyone that keep the hope, the hope in themselves, that look, one day, one day, I will not be here. One day, one day, I will not be here. Yes, we are praying that God will cause us to fulfill our days, our months and years will live well, serving his purpose if Christ tarries, but one day will not be here. Where will you spend your eternity? Are you going to spend it in the kingdom of God? Or you are going to spend it with the devil in hellfire? Jesus is the divine access into the kingdom of God. Praise the Lord. Jesus is the divine access into the kingdom of God. I will just read a scripture and then we stop. First John chapter 3. I'm presenting this to you. If you are seeing Jesus as the divine access, how do you need that to keep yourself? As you are waiting for his coming, he might come any time, he might come any day. If he's the access, how are you living your life together with him? How are you relating with Jesus? Praise the Lord. What are you doing with Jesus? Oh, I'm looking for that passage. Every one of us that keep this hope in ourselves. Oh, 1 John chapter 3, verse 3. All right. 1 John chapter 3. And every man, let me read from verse 2. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. Now we, the sons of God. It does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, who we appear, Jesus Christ is going to appear very soon. We shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that had this hope in him purified himself, even as he is pure. Praise the Lord. Do you have that hope? That Jesus is the access to the kingdom and eternity with God. What must you do? Keep on purifying yourself. Keep on making adjustments on the area where you are, no, you are not doing well. Make a commitment to God. Bow down your head and let us pray. Eternal, eternal life. Eternal, eternal life. I want to live eternal life. God save my soul. I want to live eternal life. God save my soul. Eternal. Oh, eternal. I, I want to live eternal life. God save my soul. I want to live eternal life, God. One more time. Eternal. Oh, eternal. Yeah. I want to live eternal life, God save my soul. I want to live eternal life, God save Bow down your head and make a commitment to Jesus. Jesus, you are the divine access. I discover you are the access unto all that I need. It's the access unto that which you are longing for. It's the access to the cry of your heart. Jesus is the access to your greatness. 
is the answer to every opportunity you want. Can you carry the Lord? Be my divine access. Be my divine access. Access unto the Father and to the Holy Spirit. Access unto blessings and provisions of life. Access to freedom and, 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 and liberty. Access unto victory. Is the access unto wisdom. Wisdom to do whatever you want to do. Access unto power. Power to operate your life. Access to glory, to the beauty of God. Cry unto the Lord. Jesus, I discover you are the access. I am making you my access. I am making you my divine access. If you access to the kingdom of God, access to eternal life, don't permit me to miss out of eternal life. Help my life to make adjustments. Help my life to purify myself. Help my life to keep on purging myself so that I will not miss out when you will come in your glory. Help my life today. Recaposto kapaya. Reketele probosonto. La karabaya baba. La riaba sandayaba. Access unto freedom. Freedom from sickness. Freedom from oppression. Freedom from disease. Oh, you are the access. Oh, can grant me freedom. Heal my sickness. Heal my disease. Are you sick in your body? Can you tell Jesus? You are the access for my freedom. You are the answer for my healing. Heal me today. Deliver me by your power. Makaya baya baya baya. Le karaba sondo robosente. La kende limada. Karia la sayika paye. Karabo bo bo bo. Oh luwa. Rami lobo luwa. Masaya kaya ya 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 ya. Karaba ba 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 ba. Help my love for God. 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 The Lord. Oh, I will keep my mind. I'm a focus on eternity. Finally, can you pray, Lord, as I live and serve here on earth, as I live and serve here on earth, help me to keep eternity in focus. Let me never lose eye from eternity. Help the journey of my life. Blessed be the holy name, Lord. So open your mouth to pray. Sing your heart of prayer. Thank the Lord for access. Oh, this is the moment for you to for you to appropriate